line grind and fire away. Where, where, where do you begin with one like that? I'll begin with Welby Macheski. That's a good place to start. Third outing this week. A guy that coming off the of last two years of surgery, threw one inning last year, not a lot of hope. Wondering if he should even come back and continue to even try to play baseball. It's third outing this week. Uh, giving it up for his team. The team loves to play behind him. One of our best teammates on the team, they love this guy. And um, even with the delivery that you see that's so unconventional, that, that comes from the whole process of like, man, i got to do something different. I have to, to go to figure it out mode. And uh, to see him sit there and finish that game, you know, is, is, is pretty astounding, pretty amazing. Um, I thought Davis Daniel battled. The leadoff man kept getting on. And, uh, we just said, go to the stretch. Just go to the stretch. The ball's spinning better. you got better life on your pitches from the stretch. Starting the third. And I think uh, Hellman dumped it in to start the third, but we got we actually took this thing out of the swing and liked the swing that it produced. So we just stayed in the stretch. And that was Davis Daniels' best outing because uh, he didn't let go of the rope. I thought he competed. I thought he battled um, and just hung in there and didn't let a great offense just run away from us. And then uh, with it being three to two and us just negotiating and trying to hang in the ball game, uh, Will Holland's opposite field home run, I think, made it possible and, and got, got us back up off the mat offensively there and gave us a, a charge in the ball game. Uh, we checked on a play at the plate where a guy was safe and we got the out call, a little momentum there. Um, one of the biggest swings against us is um, not touching the plate on a scoring play. Um, and I thought our guys handled it well. We just continued to play, and we were chasing it for a while um, and fighting. But um, eventually just kept working, kept working, got to the bullpen. And, you know, another good sign of resiliency in our ball club is Stephen Williams, probably 0 for 4 in the ball game, not much to show for it, and uh, it still didn't affect the next at bat and hit the grand slam and, um, you know, pulling away there late in the, in the eighth inning. So... Good win, good series win against an excellent, excellent, well coached and a tremendous ball club. You talked to, where does this team's belief come from? I hope from within. I hope it's nothing manufactured or from the outside. I hope it comes from within each of them and the sum of the parts. So I think that's where it comes from because, um, you know, pretty much if they've been listening to something that's manufactured, it won't last. If they've been listening to the outside, then nobody thinks they're any good anyway, still to this date. So. If they were listening to something from the outside, they wouldn't have this much confidence. So I definitely think it's come from within, and I think it's come from their preparation. And I just they've continued to work, and I just think they want to do well for all for one another. So I appreciate them really staying inward and just listening to to, to each other and, and trying to play the best they can and pick each other up. And we're not perfect, that is for sure, but. Uh, we're kind of okay with that. We figure every human's like that. Nobody's perfect as long as we'll just keep playing, keep seeing opportunities, and just stay after it. That's uh, we want to be resilient. That's who we want to be. You had talked about how doing that repeatedly in, in the non-conference gave you a, a confidence and belief that you could do it. Did you sense that today? I did. It took a little bit longer today. <laughs> <laughs> just a good club, you know. They just keep making plays. They don't. The door doesn't open very much, and. Um, but I, I felt the same way. I thought we were just hanging by a thread. Uh, and when Will hit the ball the other way, I was like, okay. It's, uh, we're back to a one-run ball game and uh, got a chance. And then that just causes a coach and the, the team to reset. And it made me reset and like, we got all these guys in the right place. Who's coming up? What do we do in the next couple innings? And I, I thought it gave us a charge and got us refocused and reset back in the ball game. But you, you, you harp on series. Already clinched it already. Just the importance of, of of getting this first one and and having a chance to go for a sweep now. Yeah, I think that's 16 out of 19 since the beginning of last season. So that is a big thing. That's a, that's a huge thing that that moves you forward or that holds you back. Um, and I know it's at home, and I know we we'll have to play five series on the road. And these a lot of these venues and these things are tough, tough, tough on the road. So I, and they all count the same. So tomorrow's game is humongous for us because it's another opportunity to play at home. And um, I think if you stay focused on what's important now, um, then it's really important how our club, you know, kind of rehydrates, reacts tonight, gets prepared, 
gets this behind us, you know, you can close the book on a, on a series, but, you know, we got a chance to play an SEC game at home tomorrow. Um, I, I'm really, you know, we'll, we'll check in with these guys and make sure if we can't try to have the same type of focus and see tomorrow as a huge opportunity. So looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to Tanner Burns and getting, a, getting his first start in SEC play and glad it worked out the way it did. Uh, to where he, we didn't use him in a different capacity and he gets that full start and that full preparation because he's going to have a bunch of starts for the Auburn Tigers here moving through the next three years. And you got Coker loose a little bit but didn't have to use him. You think he'll, he'll be good to go tomorrow? Absolutely. Uh, we'll knock him out of the midweek or whatever. But we, we did have him up. Uh, we, did, we set two parameters for him today. Uh, is the body does not move in excess of 80% and you're not allowed to drop any adrenaline. So I think it was a very conservative catch play. It never got to the point of full bore, um, get the arm moving full speed. So hopefully we're learning things too when guys get in the game or don't get in the game. But that was the mandate that Coach Smith sent down is not above 80% threshold and you know, you're not allowed to drop any adrenaline. Um, we need to do that with guys that we're really going to get up and down. It's going to have uh, a lion's share of the majority of our appearances. They've got to have an awareness of their They'll throw themselves, uh, you know, in, in a bad way. Now that you've seen a bit of the new replay stuff, what, what do you think of uh, the way that works? I, I loved it. I'm still trying to figure everything out. I'm leaning on the umpires. I think they're doing a good job of communicating with us. Uh, Damon Beal did a nice job behind the plate today, and uh, both of those plays were <clears throat> were scoring plays, and you know, really don't cost you, um, um, you know, one of the coaches' challenges. So. But I'm, I'm, I'm challenging away. I feel like I got two of them, man. I'm going to use them uh, when I have to. So we, we, we've got, you know, the laminated things in both dugouts, even for the opponent there, and we're working it out. But I, I think, you know, I hadn't seen either play, you know, on replay because I just sat in the dugout there. But they seemed confident, seemed like they got it right. And that's what we're all here for, the coaches, the players, our conference, and these teams is to get this stuff right.